Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis Davis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. So you told me that uh, you guys are restoring both your 5-inch 51s and your 3-inch mm -hmm. 50s, and they've got completely different styles of breech blocks. Absolutely. Can you explain all of it? Sure. So uh, for the 5-inch guns, well, really for main battery and secondary battery guns, so like your 16-inch guns, our 14 and our 5-inch 51s, uh, the breech block or the plug uses an interrupted thread. So if you look at this, you know, you have gaps here in different, it's not just like a standard screw, right? Mm -hmm. It's, there's all these kind of interruptions to it. So that's an interrupted thread thread. The, and on the, our three inch guns, like, like Olympia's, um, six pounders, it's, it's a vertical sliding breech block. So it's just a hunk of steel that moves up and down. The Germans use pretty much the same technology. It was a, it was a sliding breech block as well. So uh, on like Bismarck's and Schwerner's. Oh, no other. kidding, on, yeah. on Battleship Caliber guns. On the Battleship Caliber, yeah. So this, the vertical sliding blocks were patented by Drig Schroeder, which was an American company in, um, well, in the early 1800s, so, or late 1800s, so. Um, and the interrupted thread or the Whalen, 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 I never can pronounce that. So with the with the interrupted threaded uh, breech plug, breech block, however you want to call it, uh, what that does is like like a, unlike a screw where you have to back a screw all the way out, right, the entire length of the cylinder. With an interrupted thread, you just turn it maybe a quarter of a turn, and then you can open it. So like on your 14 inch, or your 16 inch guns, they turn a little bit and then they open out mm -hmm. instead of like turning a lot. Um, so we have an example of that right here. What's really neat is that our five inch guns are really the, the breech mechanism, the whole shooting match is, is a uh, smaller version or is a larger version of the five inch uh, breech assembly. So from the, from the carrier to the operating handle, yes, our 14 inch guns are manually opened and closed. Uh, whereas this, you, know, you, you guys have a mechanical axis, right? And, uh, but the major components of that you have, well, they're are actually sitting all over the place on the, on the shelf, but you have the breech plug here, which is super heavy. It's about a hundred, over a hundred pounds, I think about 150 pounds. Oh, okay, great. And I just chipped the concrete. <laughs> um, so, so you, th this is all disassembled because you're here restoring these guns. Exactly right. So. Uh, I'll, and there's a link in the description below to the video where we talked about the restoration of the guns. We have various parts from the five inch guns here, uh, but most of what we have here is our, our, our chunk of what we have is the, the breech assembly. So the major, the three major components for the, the breech assembly are the, the um, breech plug here. So you can see the interrupted thread here that then matches up going into the uh, interrupted thread on, on the breech itself. We have the mushroom, and then there's an operating handle, and then um, the carrier is, is actually sitting right here. Oh, that's a silky smooth paint job. Right? It's gorgeous. So you have the carrier, which swings on the hinge, it's on the side of the uh, the breech. Then you have the the breech plug, which goes on the carrier, and then the handle that goes on the side that opens and closes the, or rotates the the plug itself, and then the mushroom that goes inside the the um, the plug. Okay, so the, the breech plug ends up sitting right here, mm -hmm. with this end being outside of the gun, and this end being pushed inside the breech of the gun when you close it. Exactly. So like this right here, <laughs> if you notice it has a, like a, um, a closed hole, like a, like an injector. So in the wider here, so this is where the, the primer would go for it to fire the round. So the, the impulse, so the, the charge would fire through the mushroom, through this tube, through the opening, sorry, right here on the end of the, at the end of the mushroom, and then we hit the the um, ignition pad on the on the charge, and then start that chain reaction of 
you know, igniting all the, the propellant. Uh, are your five inch guns bag guns? They're bag guns. Okay, so that explains why you're using this sort of primer system. Whereas right. ours are case guns, it's more of a firing pin hitting a primer. Right, right. So yeah, that's why I said, you know, these are great mic microcosms of main battery guns because they're, they're bag, bag charge guns and it's the same technology. I mean, this is 19, um, the, the mounts themselves were made in 1912. Uh, I still have all their Washington Navy Yard stamps on them from 1912. I think we have one piece that's 1911. Um, most of the gun tubes are 1918, 1917, except for one pair that are from, or three of them are from um, 1913. So, um, but yeah, so let me pull out the, this piece here, take this off here, and I'm going to slide this right like this. So that basically goes, and I'm going to turn this sideways, right? Okay. So now, now Ryan, do you guys have your mushrooms on your guns or, or were they removed? The Navy removed the mushrooms from the 16 inch guns. So they're actually, uh, in many cases, sitting in the gun houses where you can see but the breech blocks, of course, is huge apparatuses they're still attached to the gun so be careful with your mushrooms because this gasket right here that's layers of asbestos so i'm not concerned about it as being a health hazard right now because it's it, it's fairly wet it's heavily oiled and it's not friable so you know asbestos when it's in the air is that's when it's friable and in the particulates are in the air is when it's the, the worst this is one of the main reasons why we do trips like this to talk to other experts in the field to find out this information that uh, we don't have any documentation on that. Or if we do, we've got hundreds of manuals and I haven't had the chance to read them all and find that out. <laughs> there, is, there is so much uh, detail and so much minutia in, in, in doing what we do. So it's a lot of relying on, hey, have you done this? Have you done that? I mean, I've reached out to our colleagues at uh, Olympia on some of this to get guidance because they have five inch 51s as well. Um, and we've been able to collaborate on things and it's been really, really great. So what is the uh, crew of Battleship Texas during World War II? 1800. About 1800 guys who are all technical experts on, on various things. It takes 1800 guys to know every facet of the ship. I don't think there are 1800 museum ship professionals in the world today. Uh, working on historic warships like this. So it's very important that we work together to learn this information. Absolutely. I mean, uh, when we took the dismounted our five inch guns, you know, took them out of the mount and then out of the air castle on the ship, they had the guns actually had to go through the gun ports. So we didn't disassemble the, the structure around the ship. We actually had to rig rigging points in the overhead and then swing them out where a crane kind of caught them and then took them down. And it took a little bit of trial and error before we got that. We're the first people that have done that, that we know of since the 50s, when Olympia's guns were put on Olympia uh, in 57, 58. So, um, so it's, it's really, really neat to, to do some of those things. And the thought exercises that you have to go through to figure out how to do something, both for the safety of people around you, you know, in the operation, but also for the safety of the object itself even when that object is, you know, five tons or 10 tons. Right, and I, and I, mean, I mean, the objects can be damaged. We're, we're looking at all this, this pitting on here from corrosion damage That's over it. time. So, so this thing has a finite lifespan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> here. being closed and sealed on the gun uh, and then water getting in the barrel and just setting up against it and, and rotting it out. If you look at the breech chamber, uh, or the chamber, it's heavily pitted from the same thing. When we opened each one, we'd had water just pouring out of them. So, um, you know, we found all kinds of weird, weird damage that we weren't expecting. So like from some of the interrupted threads, someone had taken a hammer, I guess, to keep the guns from opening. Uh, some of the, the initial threads, they had taken a hammer and then beat them in so that it would be hard to open them. Um, we couldn't see that damage when when they were on the ship you know we used a lot of um, uh, penetrating oil and uh you know some heat there's only so much heat you can put in that much steel because it just shrugs <laughs> off the heat i mean yeah. um and then um you know and then a lot of 
uh, force, unfortunately. And my concern in using that much force, and always, is what are we going to damage? You know, um, and what we we found is is that well, one, we didn't damage anything, but when we tried to close them, they would get to a certain point, like particularly this block, it would get to a certain point and stop. It's like, well, what in the hell is going on here? So you go and start looking, and it's like, oh, well, that tooth is bent like this. Oh, there's an obvious hammer blow there. Okay. And the paint's, you know, intact, right? right so, yeah. like, that wasn't recent. So going through and then trying to straighten that tooth a little bit so that you can get the, the bricks to, to function properly, which we did. So without further damaging the, the, the object. So here's a, a theoretical question for you, museum theory. Um, these are severely damaged because they were unusable they were sealed permanently so there's no ventilation to them water gets in and just sits on them and, and corrodes them what are you doing now as you restore them are you going to leave them that way and just trust that you've got another hundred years before you have to do this again no what we'll end up doing so like for the five inch guns what we'll end up doing is either we probably won't put tompions in the end of them okay. uh, we, we might but if we don't, either way, whether we put tompions on or not, we're going to put muzzle bags over them so that we limit water from getting inside of them, we limit um, um, birds from nesting. Every one of these guns had, had bird nests in the muzzles. So, um, and then we will have a, uh, we're, we're going to stand up a crew of our volunteers to, to do nothing but just go through and service these guns. And also, with them being moving, it, this, you know, they, they were frozen for eons, uh, but with now them, the guns being able to move, the mounts being able to move, they're much more easy to service. And, and you know when there's a, a, a problem that needs to be addressed just by moving them. So once upon a time, the guns were frozen in place and you are advocating for restoring them to the point where the breach will open and close. The guns will traverse and exactly. elevate. Exactly. Exactly. Because my, my preservation philosophy is, is it should be somewhat functioning how it is intended to function because if it's functioning, then it's being maintained. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's being lubricated, it's being used, it's not going to seize up. If you want to see part two of this, this video with the Ryan and I shooting the bull, um, you can find the link in the description way down there. And um, so come over and see what we got. We have some brilliant shipyard content. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Consider donating to support Battleship Texas's ongoing dry docking. There's a link in the description below for that as well. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.